Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, my last video was basically just laying the groundwork for this one and it turned out to be one of my most popular videos. So if you liked the preliminary of Nathan and the R, you'll really like this one. Now in this episode, we're going to see the way Rumpus is treated when he comes onto their panel to try and argue for the globe. We'll see how Nathan and his panel use the material that they developed in the first 10 minutes and the narrative that they are promoting to basically try and shut him down. So I think that you will enjoy my dissection of this debate. And by the way, Nathan, this is how you toe tag somebody. So let's cue up the music and get going. Their refractions debunked. My problem with this whole refraction thing and then when they want to talk about the cranes, now obviously I'm not an expert in this type of shit, right? I'm just a lay person, just a regular Joe, right? But when I look at this image and I'm seeing this horizon further, or, you know, 10 times further than it's supposed to be, and then we're told this refraction is the cause of that, I'm like, okay. But then I, I look at the cranes, right? And these guys, they, they always point at the crane, look at the cranes, they're all distorted. Okay, so you're saying that distortion is this refraction. So the cranes are being distorted because of refraction, but at the same time, this very refraction is giving us clear visibility so that we can see a horizon 10 times further than it's supposed to be. Now, once again, it's a problem with an understanding of what distortion means. The flame booms on the oil rigs are straight objects, yet they look like an S in the black swan photographs. That's distortion. The fact that the horizon is loomed up due to the refraction. If you look at the horizon, there's actually several of them. And the reason that there are several of them is the light is passing through different temperatures. This is not an abnormal finding. In fact, that is one of the things that may have come into play when the Titanic hit an iceberg. I actually did a video on that not long ago, and I'll see if I can put a link to that in the description as well. That's what happens to horizons when you have refraction going on. The horizon can actually appear to be above your eye level due to the amount of refraction. And this was something that Jesse Kwasowski actually measured out at the Great Salt Lake. He had a horizon on the Salt Lake that was actually higher than his observer location as determined by an auto level. That's just the way that works. And it's not a surprise to any of us that actually understand it. So which is it? Is it distorting or is it giving us clear visibility? I, I don't get that. <laughs> it's that's, that's ridiculous. Where I'm going. That's, that's kind of where I'm going, Chuck, but in that same vein. I've been so, there, bro. Ever since I heard Benny Crane refraction, I'm just like, what? So you're, you're, you're asserting that because of the distortion, oh, we see refraction. Okay, great. But now you're also saying that because of that same, the same thing causing the distortion is causing the horizon to be at further than nine miles when it's supposed to be at 1.2? Mm, nah. That sounds like uh, double speak and pseudoscience and just nonsense. Double speak, pseudoscience, and nonsense. Okay, well, let's start off with that. First of all, who says that the horizon's supposed to be at 1.2 miles? That is claiming that the horizon must coincide with the geometric horizon and disregards all effects of refraction. Okay, show me how that will occur and what under what conditions that will occur on Earth. All right, they won't because Earth has an atmosphere. The refracted horizon is beyond the geometric horizon. And if it's high refraction, such as the black swan photographs, it will be very much beyond the normal horizon. Now, here's another interesting thing. In those 95 out of 100 photographs, where you look at the two oil rigs and the far oil rig is partially hidden by the horizon, why don't you go ahead and explain to me on a flat earth how her horizon can ever be in front of an object. Geometrically, that simply is not possible. The horizon must always be behind the object on a flat earth, yet, in 95 out of 100 of those cases, you see the horizon in front of the far oil rig, and in some cases, you even see it in front of the near oil rig. 
So your entire argument in this 1.22 miles nonsense that you keep bringing up is completely untenable. Yeah, but their whole, uh, prior to the black swan, their whole stance was that objects are refracted from the horizon, not the horizon. Yes, the horizon's an so object. Things, so things that are below the horizon are being pushed up. They never, the ever talked object. about the horizon being refracted. So now because of the, the black swan, they have to object. take it a step further and say that the horizon is Can you not attend to my talking, Rumpus? So now you got two horizons. The horizon is refracted. It is an object. <laughs> oh, hey. look here. The horizon <laughs> is refracted. <laughs> what what kind of refraction is it, Rumpus? Sorry? Did he just what say the, the horizon is the object? The, you what can type see of water, refraction the water, is the horizon? The water, hold on. Well, let me answer. The water that makes up the horizon is a physical object, and so it's refracted just like everything else. What type of Why refraction are you referring to? Sorry, I missed that. Sorry, sorry, I interrupted you, Anthony. Karen. What type of refraction are you claiming that the water is doing? Now, you see, as soon as Rumpus walks in, the first thing they do is try and put him on the defensive. What type of refraction are you talking about? What type of refraction? Refraction is refraction. It's as simple as that. Now, you can have an inferior or a superior mirage, for example. They're both variations of the same refraction under different conditions. But it's not like there are several different types of refraction. This is, again, designed primarily to put Rumpus on the defensive and make him answer this nonsensical question. Now, we're going to finish up with this pretty quick because I just want to show what happens when normal people actually come on this show. So let's go ahead and have a listen to Rumpus for a while. The water on the horizon is refracted like everything else is refracted. Nice question. On the You're dumb. I've been towering this morning. I heard them say Hold towering. on, Don. Hold on, Don. Do you want to ask him again, Anthony? He didn't answer you. You said the horizon is refracting. I asked what kind of refraction is it refracting with? Well, usually it's just standard refraction, but it depends on the conditions. Oh, think. standard refraction's been debunked. That's based on an R value you don't have, because that would give you a geometric horizon based on that R value. So if the horizon's refracted, you don't have an R-based geometric horizon, and you're going to require one for terrestrial, otherwise known as standard refraction. So no, not standard refraction. You don't have an R value if you don't have a geometric horizon. Wasn't that quite a mouthful? It's almost as if he has that prepared as a script in advance. And he's been laying the groundwork for this for the first 10 minutes of this show before he even had his first guest on, and that was Rumpus. We'll give it a couple more minutes. I want you to see the Nathan in action. Yeah, we do have an R value. You don't have a geometric horizon, and that's what an R value gives you. We don't need to get a geometric horizon. To that's what R gives you, you complete Muppet. R <laughs> gives you a geometric horizon. Are you dense? No, Nathan. The geometric shape of a sphere gives you a geometric horizon. It has nothing to do with the R value, the circumference, or the diameter. Those are ways that you describe the sphere. The geometric horizon is another property of that sphere. The fact that we don't see a geometric horizon because there's an atmosphere over our sphere doesn't change the fact that we have known distances on great circle courses. We have known shadow lengths under the Eratosthenes experiment. We have the dip angle from Al Biruni. These are all different ways to measure the size and shape of the Earth. We don't need a geometric horizon to do that, and the geometric horizon does not define the shape of the Earth. The shape of the Earth defines the geometric horizon, if it is present. That is not based just on making an observation of the geometric horizon. No, no, based on R. I didn't say based on observation. Based on R, the radius value, that's what terrestrial refraction got. 7 over 6 R. R has been debunked. Now, you see how he's trying to tie terrestrial refraction to an R value? Terrestrial refraction curves all on its own. It doesn't know what it's curving over. We can estimate what the curve of the terrestrial refraction is by using the constant of the radius of the Earth times 7 over 6. That's a good estimate of it. However, 
The curve of the refraction is its own thing. The curve of the surface of the Earth is also its own thing. They're not related to each other. R gives you a geometric horizon, and according to you, you're describing a non-geometric horizon. So you don't have one. That's based on R, not your vision. Why are you juxtaposing vision with me saying R value? Are you dumb? We know R's correct. So what's, what's the it's not correct. You haven't got one. R gives you a geometric horizon, you moron. Science denier. How can, how I can't help Science you. denier? Why are you ad humming me? I've just pointed out that R gives you a geometric horizon. You're saying science denier. Why this ham-handed ad hominem segue? No, R does give you a geometric horizon. That's you don't have one! What do you mean R does give you a geometric horizon? Show it us! When the horizon... You when, when, when the horizon? Show it us, you moron! Right. Okay, then every horizon that you look at is a function of a geometric... Not a function of! That's not the geometric horizon, then. So you're going to beg the question of a geometric horizon? You can't show me! Function? No! There are two factors. You never. No, there's only one horizon, not two factors for a horizon. You notice how he keeps hammering away his narrative without letting Rumpus get a word in edgeways? What he's saying is that we don't have a geometric horizon, therefore we don't have an R value, because, of course, the geometric horizon is the only way that we can calculate the size of the Earth. This is his attempt to redefine science. Now, obviously, we can determine the R value by a number of different means. Specifically, we can use the distance on great circle courses. We can use the Eratosthenes method. We can use Al Biruni. Now, there will be some inaccuracies in these measurements, but they're on the order of less than 1%. For example, at 45,000 feet, the dip to the horizon is 3.75 degrees. That gives us a radius of the Earth that is within 0.8% of the actual radius of the Earth. When you use great circle courses with aircraft, you can plot those great circle courses using the known radius of the Earth and have them come up accurate within a mile. These are not things that are dependent solely on being able to visually see the geometric horizon. Oakley is attempting to define the size and shape of the Earth on our ability to see that geometric horizon. So the sum of his entire argument is, is that if you can't see a geometric horizon, which we acknowledge you can't, therefore the Earth is not a sphere. It makes no sense whatsoever. But notice how he'll continue to hammer and interrupt and mute. Notice the difference in the volume levels between Rumpus and Oakley. Notice how Rumpus can't get a word in edgewise, because this is all about Nathan promoting his narrative. It's not about actually exploring the facts or debating the facts. One being a geometric one you can't see. We've only got one. Yeah, we've only got, we've only got one. And it's not geometric. We've only got one horizon. It's not geometric. That's correct. It's not. Yeah, so we haven't got an R value based geometric horizon. So your R's debunked for your terrestrial refraction. The apparent horizon. No, 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 no. R based geometric for this terrestrial refraction, moron. But you have to allow for refraction. Though. We have to allow for a geometric R-based horizon for this refraction, moron. For a geometric horizon... You haven't got one. And R's based on it. Those two things together. No, one thing, one horizon. Yours is geometric. Can't even get no, a word in edgeways. Yeah. Not, no. Yeah, you're definitely going to be needing a geometric R-based horizon for your mathematics. Terrestrial refraction's got an R in it. Of course. Because of refraction. No, because of R. 7 over 6 R. Not because of refraction. Very much because of 7 over 6 of the R value giving you a geometric horizon you don't have. It's been debunked. You now, you see how he's trying to link the shape of the Earth to refraction using a mathematical formula? Now, as I mentioned earlier, the reason that R is in the mathematical formula is it's a convenient constant. So we could use another constant, for example. It could be... Now, given the fact that the radius of the Earth is a very large number, by multiplying that unit of measurement, the radius of the Earth, by 7 over 6, we can estimate the radius of the curvature of refraction under standard conditions. That's just for convenience. Again, the refraction of light does not know the shape of the ground it refracts over. 
We just use the radius of the earth because it's convenient. It has nothing to do with the shape or the size or anything else of the earth. Refraction is refraction. You're not going to be able to use this refraction, you moron. Refraction is what causes the 7 over 6 R bit. Sorry, refraction's not causing the mathematics of an R value. No, it isn't. R gives you a geometric physical <laughs> sphere edge for horizon, marked with an X labeled horizon in your geometric maths. It's based on geometry. It's crucial for your maths. And when you add in refraction... When, no, no, no. When we add in terrestrial refraction, that needs R. Not when we add in refraction. You need R first. So Nathan continued on in this vein for the next 15 minutes. Notice that he's not allowing Rumpus to speak. Notice that he's just simply promoting his narrative. Notice he's redefining what geometry and science is. Now, those of us listening to this just sit back with a little bit of amusement. But some people actually go on his show, and I, I have yet to figure out why Rumpus and people like that go on his show. Uh, what are they trying to prove? All they're doing is they're being the abbot to Nathan Oakley's Costello. Now, we're going to see some more examples of this later on this week because I'm going to do a couple of shows on Oakley, just pointing out his little techniques and showing people how to counter him. The only way to win the game is not to play. Don't go on this guy's show. Don't give him the time of day. He is amusing to look at periodically, but don't be fodder and be his straight man. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by. Now remember to hit that like and subscribe button. We have Patreons. We also have channel memberships. Now over on Common Sense Science, I got a new equatorial mount thanks to the generosity of the Patreons of this channel. And we'll be doing some tutorials on that as well. So you guys take care and I'll see you again soon.